So let's get started. I'm going to be fast and furious about ASL. Okay, so the brand new world of ASL. So all of you have games, you put the games in the App Store, and then you suffer because no one finds these games. And you wonder why people don't find the games. So I'm going to tell you why people don't find your games. And if you wake up, I will give you my book at the end of the conference. And I will tell you why Flappy Birds did so well. It's not the downloads. Okay, so let's check it out. So 30 seconds about me. That's my name. I have that of two. There's only one in the photo. I just climbed Kilimanjaro. Nothing to do with games, but pretty cool. Um, I'm the ASO guy. I'm not a coder. I have no idea how to make games. Um, I love games, but I'm fascinated about how people search. Drives me crazy. I love people searching. It's like fetish. Okay? And search is so important. If you have kids, you will understand this. You talk about incentivized downloads and buying downloads. If you're in a plane and your son is crying, okay, you don't wait for an incentivized download. You search for something fast, okay, because it's going to drive you crazy. And if you think search is important, just ask your little toddler or nephew, and if they want one specific app, they know what they want. Okay, so they don't want like a toddler app. They know exactly what they want. They want the Smurfs or they want my son Minecraft. He's obsessed with that. So they know exactly what they're looking for. So here's the question, I mean, to ask yourself. I mean, if, if users know so well what they want, let's talk about games in the App Store. This is iOS. So this is the way games have developed. 2008, we have 47 apps, 42,000 games, 89,000 apps, and this start going crazier and crazier and crazier. And all of you guys making games, it's only going to get more difficult because right now, I mean, this was last year. We have around 159,000 games. And obviously, the competition is insane. And all of you are making the same games. So what we're going to try to learn is how we can make the same games by trying to get free traffic. All this is free, and you can do it 100% for free. So. It's the only thing here in this conference, you don't have to spend one penny. Awesome. So here we go. 2014, there's 213,000 games in March. The question here is how you can make things a bit different and try to get your own market. So let's talk about how, I mean, this is very, I mean, current data, 23% of games. So all of you guys developing games, you dominate the App Store mainly. And people go to the App Store mainly to download games. But the same way it works with anything to do with search. Okay, now think about the way you guys search for apps that you need. All of you that came to Singapore, you were searching for apps to do with Singapore at some stage. You didn't wait for a banner about Singapore or about a promotion about Singapore. You went and you search. Okay, because you have a brain and you know how to search. And that's because Google has shown you how to search. So you don't put game you know what you want. You put the exact game that you want. And that's the advantage of apps optimization. So we're going to do this in 20 minutes. Usually I do this in eight hours. There's eight hours of content that I provide about apps optimization. So we're going to do it very, very fast. So here's the deal. How apps rank in the app stores. The difficult part is that we have two app stores mainly. There's more, but let's talk about iOS. So it's metadata, titles, and keywords. You know that because you submit apps to the app store download numbers, reviews and ratings, and install factor, and the secret sauce that Apple will never tell us. And with Android, we have metadata, we have downloads, we have reviews, rating, social signals, and the uninstall factors, people uninstall your app, and the magic dust. Most funny thing is that Google is speaking after me. So <laughs> I hope I got it right. So, Here's the funny thing. Every single week, every single day, apps go up and down. It's like the stock market. And they go up and down based on different keywords. So ranking goes up and down every single day. And every single day, there's winners and there's losers. Now, when you see a trend, that trend's starting to happen before you see it. And now when you see all these games that are super popular, that trend started before increasing. So the question is, who is your market and what are the, those, I mean, keywords that are popular in your arena if there's 
becoming more popular or they're losing popularity. And all the information is available with tools nowadays. Now, this is a competition analysis that we can actually come up to find out keywords. So what keywords some apps are ranking? The image is pretty horrible, but what tells us is if they're ranking different categories, how many reviews they have, and what potential keywords do they have. So part of the whole idea of ASO is to do competition analysis and understand if who's your competition and what keywords they may be ranking for. Now, that is the challenge. What people are searching for. So where do you guys fail? You fail in a few things. The first thing, don't get upset with me, is you make apps that you absolutely love. Okay, so why do you make this app? Because I loved it, okay? And the, you love the title. So I was looking at indie developers, I was like, that title is horrible. Change the title, because no one searches for that. You love the topic, okay? Uh, forget, forget. So forget what people want. So you haven't asked anyone at all. You made a game that you thought was amazing because your girlfriend told you it was amazing, and your best friend thinks it's super cool, but you didn't ask anyone else, or you ask other developers, okay? Big mistake, ask people are going to buy your game. Don't ask the market. So if your app is about toddlers, go to a kindergarten and ask moms. Ask permission first before going to a kindergarten, okay? Um, and ask people that potentially are going to buy your app. Don't just ask people in your industry. I mean, contact people that are potentially going to buy it. And it's lack of research. So, how do apps really rank, okay? And this is kind of difficult because the algorithm is the million dollar engine of the app store. So we're going to do a few experiments to understand here how you can actually get different type of um, of research, we know Flappy Birds, and you were someone's talking about how Flappy Birds go there because based on the amount of downloads. No, really, Flappy Birds go there because Flappy Birds literally showcase the weakness of the algorithm. Flappy Girls, Flappy Birds, <laughs> Flappy Girls, Flappy Birds is the most silly game in history. Okay, that's it. Okay, there's nothing amazing, but it's so silly that it creates something viral, and it was people were posting reviews. It was trendy to put a review of Flappy Bird. You were laughing that you were playing Flappy Bird. You were making fun of yourself that you were playing that game. And that is literally what took Flappy Birds all the way up. I want to show you, show you why. This is not Flappy Bird because Flappy Bird went down. This is Flappy Wings, something similar. We have King.com, the big boys, okay? And King.com has half a million all-time reviews. This is literally in more than a year and a half. Now, these boys have all the budget in the world, and they have a million reviews. Now, Flappy Wings, that is not the popular Flappy Birds, got 183,000 since February. And why? Because people like to post reviews about them playing Flappy Birds. Very interesting. No budget, nothing. They were just using one thing, the algorithm. So it's not that, I mean, Flappy Birds bought downloads, this mark, no. They were just taking advantage of the way the algorithm works. So if you start thinking how the app store really works, you're going to lose a lot of traffic. Okay, so the ASO process is very simple. Find a niche, define one angle of your niche. So it's racing cars, what type of racing cars you're going to choose. Research the keywords, find who is your real competitor, Find how much traffic those keywords have, define those keywords, attack, wait to see if it works, test, track, and repeat. So the usual trend that you guys do is you find popular keywords, you do exactly the same as the rest of the market, you do the same thing, the same apps, don't analyze the data that is out there, don't do the research about what people want, and predict that it may work without even asking the market, and if you fail, you do another game. Okay, and this is very interesting because you could change the angle a little bit and make it work. So, what ends up happening is this. Have you seen this? Flappies all over. But the funny thing is that when you make a game called Magic Dog Unlimited, well, no one is really looking for a Magic Dog. People don't go to the app store thinking, hmm, I wonder if I'm going to look for a magic dog today. So the question is, how are you going to find those keywords that people are looking for? So 
What we forget is that all users are not the same. So my four-year-old is not the same as your four-year-old girl. They search different, or they're asking for different things. We're not zombies. People don't search for fun in the App Store. People know exactly what they're looking for. There's different levels of competition. If you're an indie developer, you're not competing against EA Games or King. That's not your competition. Your competition is smaller. Sm smart users are niche users. So if someone is looking for a submarine simulator, they're going to download a submarine simulator. They're not going to download a flying simulator. They know what they want. And keywords are not the same, even if they feel the same. And I'm going to show you a quick example. See how much time I have? Cool. So real case. Ninjas versus Samurai, OK? We all know ninjas in the App Store. They're everywhere. So let's look at ninjas very quickly. So ninja, there is a traffic of, this traffic is a guesstimate from 1 to like 10, how good they are. So ninja is 6.1 of traffic based on an ASO tool. The important part here is the number of iPhone apps. There's 5,288 iPhone apps with the word, OK, ninja. So you make a game called Awesome Ninja, and you wonder why you're not getting any traffic. Well, because you're competing against 5,288 apps. Now, let's presume that we change this, and we think, let's make it a samurai. So the samurai is very similar amount of traffic, a bit less, but there's 1,300 apps. You just, I mean, slash in, by a fifth, OK? I mean, the, the competition, so much easier. Just because you changed the little dude that was running instead of ninja, you made a samurai. Now, you can even go further, and you're going to call him something like, I mean, look at ninja for two seconds. These are all the mega ninja apps. I have clubs in ninja, I mean, super amazing apps. Fruit ninja, huge authority. Now, if we look at samurai, some of apps are very weak. They're not updated in the 42 months. I mean, some of them are not so popular like the ones in Ninja. So it's going to be easier for you guys to rank if you get more downloads. Now, you can even go a bit further and try to find long tail keywords with Samurai. So Samurai Sword has a traffic of 4.4, very, very nice, but it's only 142 apps for iPad. And some of the apps ranking are doing pretty bad. So if you can come up with a keyword for your app that has nice traffic, you can have easy victories. Completely free. You're not spending one penny in, on downloads. So now the question is, Samurai Sword, 4.4, 244 iPhone apps. And that will bring you organic traffic without doing a thing just because you put that in your title or on your keywords. So that's the power of ASO. Now, the question is, why Samurai has so much traffic? And that's what people don't ask themselves. So if you find a good keyword, ask yourself why Samurai has so much traffic. If you have kids, it's these dudes, OK? These dudes make Samurai a powerful keyword, OK? The Power Ranger Samurai. So that is exactly why there's so much search for Samurai. So you do understand, OK, I found this amazing keyword. Let's put it on. Stop two seconds and wonder why people are getting that traffic. Make sense? Cool, let's keep going. So what's the answer? Of course, the answer mainly is don't be too greedy when you go for keywords. Some keywords like ninja, it's going to be impossible for you guys to get any ranking. Be flexible. And that is very difficult for developers. If I tell you, can we change the ninja to samurai? It's like I'm offending you. And it's like, we can't change the ninja. It's a ninja. A ninja and a samurai are very different. Well, not really when you're four years old. OK, I mean, that's kind of like the same. So you have to be a bit flexible initially, OK? Understand your audience, but please do. And one of the things I suggest to my clients is this crazy thing of going to Starbucks and ask people, what do they search when they're looking for your type of apps? No Facebook, no developer communities, no girlfriends, no brothers. Ask real human beings that don't know about apps. Ask them, what do you search when, you're, when your son is crying because he wants an app? Ask them. Know who your competitors are. Try to guess what keywords they're ranking for. And high popularity in keywords is not always high downloads. So you saw Ninja, great popularity, but that doesn't mean you will get a lot of downloads. Now, if ASO in English is new, 
in other languages is like a piece of cake because no one is doing it. So this huge market opportunity is German, Spanish, okay, Portuguese, all those like Chinese, huge popularity. Now, it's the dark side of the moon because no one is doing it. So if you just start doing it properly, you can have very easy victories. It's very easy to outsource. So you can train people to do this for you using the tools. There's almost no competition. Believe it or not, I know this in fact, the big, big publishers are not doing ASO. So you can just go there and get one market like the Brazilian market and you can crush it for the word ninja because no one else is doing it. And it's a great ROI because guess what? It's free. So what's the future? Well, mainly your goal is mainly you to adapt because if you keep paying for traffic without doing the homework that you can get for free, well, I mean, you're going to be losing at the end, especially in developers. So keep an eye on trends. Imagine if you realize that flappy bursts were happening just a little bit before it happened. You could make a killing. So looking at the trends of keywords is super important. Some keywords are always going to be trendy every year. Super Bowl, okay, is always going to be trendy, but some keywords become trendy just randomly. One YouTube video and something becomes popular. Use ASO tools. You can start using App Annie. App Annie is actually free right now. They just launched an ASO tool, so very, very cool. And it's 100% free. So just check it out and start playing with that. Know your keywords. I ask people, what kind of keywords you're ranking for? The answer is, we have no idea. We just know we're not getting downloads. And then I ask, so what keywords do you want to rank for? And the answer is that we have no idea. So know your keywords. Know who your evil competitors are. This is very important, okay? Know if they're ranking for something that you want or not. So if I ask you, what keyword do you want to rank for and you have no idea, at least you should know who's ranking for those keywords. And try to achieve easy victories. And the easy victory is if you are, I mean, an indie developer and you make one app, hey, let's get some free downloads at least. Because the problem that you have is you launch your app, you get all these downloads, and then it drops and you feel that sadness that invades your body when you're not getting no more downloads, well, why not have ranking for a keyword that you can have downloads constantly for a very long time? And remember, organic is always healthier, okay? It's free, it costs you nothing, and once you do it and you implement in one app, you can implement in all the apps, and even you can implement it right now in apps that you have. So you have apps that are dead in the App Store, why not go back and update them, change metadata, and see if things can work? Um, I have a little present for you guys. I have a little book, 180 pages about ASO, and some of my sexy models will give you a little poster there with a download link for the PDF version. You can get the, if you can go right now, you can get the free book at ASO Bible slash friends. You check the website. Add me on Twitter and send me a question on Twitter. We'll love that. Um, and this is my email here. And I know you're dying to ask many questions. Any questions? Thank you, Gabe. Any questions from the audience? Don't break my heart. I, I actually have a question. Go for it. So, so you've mentioned the theory, but, and you've also mentioned that there are tools out there that we should use. Without being too salesy or promoting anyone specifically, what, 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 what can you recommend? There's a few tools. One is called, I mean, what's called sensortower.com. Um, app Annie right now allows you to see, I mean, what other apps are ranking for. So if you're doing a market research and you want to see what one good app is doing, you can actually see what keywords they're ranking for. So the ASO becomes more powerful when you're analyzing your competition. So my suggestion you're going to be doing this is do it before you launch your app. Before you start paying designers to do the little character, start finding those keywords that other people are ranking for. Good question, Pepe. <laughs>